Hey guys, welcome back for another J-pop album review. First off, life has just been crazy since the new year. I have been super busy with work and then my husband had to get a big surgery so then I was helping out with that and I just haven't really had time to sit down and do this but I know you're waiting for my review on Kotokumi's most recent albums Monster and Angel and don't worry, I do plan on getting to those. It's just, you know, one thing at a time. And I'm honestly making sure I've really got my thoughts in order on those songs. So don't worry, it is coming. So in the meantime, I thought I would go ahead and do a long overdue review, which is on Emoto Namiez's Play album from 2007. And we know that this was like a big one for her. Like this was a big hit album. People adore and love this album. So we're going to go through the tracks and I will let you guys know what my thoughts are on it. So yes, this time I'm going to be wearing my headphones for this because I think it's just going to work out a little better this way if we hear the sound and everything like that. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started. So let's go. Also, guys, just so you're aware, I have put our Dear Namie over here in the corner. That way you guys can check out the track list as I'm going through it. Also, that way I can make sure that you can hear the songs through my headphones. So, you know, you know, just trying to cover all my bases here. So let's go ahead and get started. Track one is called Hide and Seek. So, guys, this song is a Banger! A lot of people like this song, myself included. It's such an authoritative song, and I mean, obviously you can see the cover of the album itself has her in like a police uniform, but the beat of this song is just so like, ugh, like it's just a, a good power song for Namie, and I just love the, the feel of this song that I get from it, and I mean, again, it's a Namie song, the lyrics aren't like crazy deep or anything, but... It's a it's a fun song and like you can't help but like this song especially when it gets to the chorus. Da -da, hide and seek. So I love this song so much. I think it's great. Though I do wish that Namie gave it like a little bit more like umph. Like you know when we have a Kotokumi song or Hamasaki Ayumi like they put a lot of attitude or feeling or emotion into a song when they sing it and I never really hear Namie do that as much in her music. But yeah, this was a big album for Namie, and it really like kind of set the precedence, I guess, for her, in my personal opinion. But yeah, this song is fantastic. Track two is Full Moon. This song, I think, is amazing. It's so different. And immediately from the get-go of this song, when you hear the like a big gong or something like it just sets like the precedence of the song like it's just it's eerie it's very Halloweenish to me Halloweenish Halloweeny whatever you want to say but it's mysterious because of all the instrumentals that they have in here in the background like I just think oh it's so great and I listened to the song quite a bit so I was so happy with this song being right after hide and seek because it really just continues to set the vibe and I like how they add in the wolf how the oh, and I think it's just it's a very creative song because it's so unique and different. There's a lot of elements of this song that really stand out from a lot of the rest of her discography and from any other artists. I've never really quite heard a song like this. So it's got a good sick beat to it. It makes you want to dance to it and it makes you like want to. I don't know, being that Halloween kind of vibe. And I just, I adore this song so much. I, I freaking love this. Track three is Can't Sleep, Can't Eat, I'm Sick. And this is another classic Namie song. This is one of her, it was a single, I believe. I'm pretty sure. But this is a really good song. It's definitely a big change up from our first two tracks that we've had on this album. But it's still a good song. I, I do have to admit, I don't always listen to this one. I do kind of have to be in the right mood. It kind of reminds me of, uh, what is that song? It's from her 60s, 70s, 80s single she released, Rocksteady. It's got a funky town and Rocksteady vibe to me. And there's not that there's anything wrong with those songs because I do enjoy those. But yeah, just kind of that same kind of like R&B kind of earlier on hip hop vibe. But it's a it's a good song and it's definitely, once again, different. It's very nami -y. And so I do like this and I love her outfit that she wears during this video and it's just, she looks gorgeous in it. So absolutely love it. 
Track four is It's All About You. And if the title of this song doesn't tell you what it's about, then I don't know what else will. But yeah, basically in a relationship with this guy that's kind of, you know, what I'm taking as abusive or manipulative and everything is about him. He is so selfish and she's sick and tired of it. So this song, it's interesting because this whole beginning, the verses, like it doesn't really flow in my personal opinion. Like it just kind of sounds like just a random sound. But the chorus is really good. I do enjoy that. And it's definitely meant to be more of like an angry attitude song and like her just being aggravated and releasing her feelings. So I think it does work well. I like the sound of like the breaking glass that they have in the song because it's kind of like breaking that barrier down of like, I'm not going to take this anymore from you. But it's interesting in the sense that it's almost like a rock song and you don't really hear Namie do too many like rock sounding songs. Like I feel like it sounds more normal for Kotokumi because she is fantastic at rock songs, but Nami, it's a little bit strange for me, but I do still like this song. It's all right, but these beginning verses, just the standard verses of this song itself make it kind of hard for me to listen to because it just doesn't flow well with what the chorus does in my personal opinion. So I'm not like a huge fan of the song. I'll listen to it sometimes if I feel like being like, angry <laughs> but other than that like I don't really listen to this much in track five we come of course to the classic funky town and this is such a unique song number one it is very catchy number two I adore the way she looks in the music video like absolutely stunning and beautiful love the outfits and her hair it's just fantastic like Namie is a gorgeous woman she is so beautiful but this song is it's not really what I typically listen to it's not quite my jam personally so it's not something that I get excited about like I don't ever sit here typically and be like oh my gosh I cannot wait to go listen to funky town like ever like even when I heard this song like back in the day like this is still just not my kind of style of music it's a good song I think it's composed well because it's unique it stands out definitely in her discography and it is catchy, so like I, I do get this stuck in my head. Dun, 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 dun. Everybody, let's get out. Oh, we'll pick up living up, living in the funky town. But I don't, I have no idea what the words are, guys. So I'm just, I'm just going with the flow, other than living in this funky town, something like that. But yeah, I think it's a good song. It's all right. I listen to it here and there, but not very often. Six is step with it. It's hard for me to say what I want to say about this song because it's a good like a jazzy beat to me, like an R&B jazz beat. And again, I think it, it's a very like kind of chill song and it always is kind of odd to me. Like this is when you read the lyrics for this song, it's a pretty sexy song. I mean, she's talking about being with this guy and that he's going to she's going to give her body to him tonight to tr and he'll blah, blah, and she will trust it to him. And so I do like the beat of this song. Like it's, it makes you want to clap along to it. And it is catchy with the step, step, da, 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 da. Like her vocals are really good in this. I like the transitions of it, but it's still not like my exact sound that I go for, but I would say step with it. I do prefer it more than like, it's all about you and typically more than funky town for me personally. So I, I think that this is a good song, but again, I have to be in the right mood for it. Track seven is Hello. Most of us know this song. I love the music video for this. I think the dance is so cute, especially if you've watched her Best Fiction live tour and how they've got like, literally it's like the old Razor phones. So like, you know, kids these days, they probably, if they watch that, they'd be like, what in the world is that? Is that what a cell phone was? But I mean, at least it was cute, right? It was like bedazzled or something, but I think that this song is very crafty and it this one is very nominee to me for sure especially the dance that goes along with it but this song is really catchy too all the hello we gotta take a break real quick just to jam guys I have no idea what the lyrics are of this song I don't really know very many Nami lyrics like at least like the Japanese lyrics but you know me guys like I'm all about my kuchin Hello, da -da 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 -no but I just think that this is so cute and I love the little 
hello. I just think that that's really cute, and I, I do listen to this song quite a bit. Like, I will definitely listen to this one. I don't usually skip past it. Eight is Should I Love Him. And this is honestly the very first ballad that you get on this album, which is, in my opinion, a good thing, because we've had albums like, oh, what was it, Concentration 20? Was it Concent... No, it was not Concentration 20. My bad, guys. It was not that one. It was... <laughs> oh, uh, why can't I think of it? It's her Love 2000. Wow, like I can't believe I can't think of the name of her album. But anyways, it was one of her earlier ones that it was literally like almost every other song was a ballad and it kind of like put me to sleep, especially towards the end of the album. And this is a very easygoing song. I do think it's very beautiful. I like the piano in the background. I like the subtleties of her voice. And literally this internal conversation of trying to figure out, should I love him? Should I give this person my feelings, my heart, my emotions? Because that is a big question a lot of us have to ask ourselves. And so I feel this song is something that we can really connect to. And so I do like this one for a very easygoing song, but I typically don't like just go to this for listening to. But I did like that she kept her voice soft for this because if it is an internal conversation with yourself, like a monologue, then I feel like you would be talking softer while you're, you know, kind of more airy in your response to yourself of, should I love him? Should I spend time with him? Like you're kind of talking softly to yourself. So I felt like it really went well with the vibe of the song. Nine is top secret. This is another jam, guys. I love this song. The beat is amazing, and her vocals are really great, and it's addictive. I mean, you you catch on to this song very quickly, and just like Hide and Seek. Like, I put Hide and Seek and Top Secret kind of on the same scale, on the same level for, like, the sound. I feel like they go really well together, so I was happy to see her kind of start the album with this and then kind of get towards the end of it to kind of pick it right back up, especially after that ballad that we just had. And so this is a great song. Again, it's a very, like, sensual song, but it is really good. I love the dance for this one. And guys, when she sings this song live, like, this girl gets exhausted. Like, like I give her props because she works so hard on this song. But I love the performance in her Best Fiction tour where she's, like, um, with the, uh, what do you call that? Like a uh, ballet bar, I guess. But this is so addictive. Top secret, da 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 Top secret, top secret, da 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 Like, you want to sing along with this song. And I love, again, it's got an eerie vibe to it. Like, right here. Like, it's just, it kind of reminds me of, it's like a mix of Hide and Seek and Full Moon. So, I, I really like this song. Ten is Violet Sauce Spicy. This song is amazing. I get really excited every time I hear this song, guys. Like, dip the sauce, dip it in the sauce, dip it in the sauce. Hey, hey. Like, this song is just, mm, it's like everything. It's such a jam. And, like, I, when this song comes on, I'm like, yes. Okay, back in the day, when this song came out, like way back in 2007, and I heard this song when it came out on her single for White Light, I believe it was. I heard the song and I was like, what is this? Like, I love this sound, this beat. It's mysterious. It's edgy. And and I believe she does say, welcome to Sin, it says like, welcome to Sin City. And I think this was actually used in that movie that came out then at the time. But this is such like a um, epic, like mysterious, like solving a mystery type vibe. That might sound stupid, but like for reals. And back in the day when this came out, I was like in this phase of like an obsession of making music videos for different animes. And I had a whole YouTube channel that had um, like Naruto music videos and like Rurouni Kenshin and all sorts of different ones. And then, you know, all the copyright stuff came out and then they like ruined my channel and like took everything down or like, you can't use the music, blah, blah, blah. And so with this, I, uh, Started, I made a music video for the anime Black Cat with this song and it was just like random clips that I found online and like it was my beginning of making videos and yeah I used this song but it was pretty fun I had a good time with it and I like I listened to the song so much but amazing song. 
11 is Baby Don't Cry. If you know Namie, you know this song. I guarantee it. You've heard it. She sings this one all the time. And I do have to say, I do really love this song. I think it is so cute. It's an uplifting message. Like, when you listen to this song, how can you not feel good? How can you not feel happy and uplifted? Like, I love the way this song makes me feel. It puts me in a good mood. It puts a smile on my face. And this is definitely a song I feel like you can feel Namie in. And so that's why I really adore this one is because it is so beautiful. And the music video is so simple, but so sweet. And just seeing her walk around and oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with how long her hair is. Like, I mean, guys, look at this. Like, my hair needs to get a lot longer if I want to be at the Namie length, which, you know, I would love to be that way one day, but you know, like this is hard work. But anyways, this song, amazing and a masterpiece. 12 is our final track on this album and it is titled Pink Key and this song I don't dislike it but I don't love it but I do like that again it's kind of a more uplifting positive song and I feel like the way that it is composed is actually a really great song to end this album because it's almost like kind of starts this grandeur like fanfare in a sense and it ends you with that happy note like ending to a movie or a book that you're reading or watching you know and it puts you again in a good mood but it's more it's still upbeat not I feel like baby don't cry is a little more sullen or more of a downplay and then pinky is bringing it up a little bit more but I think it's a cute song I like the dance with it but do I typically listen to this song no but if I am listening to this album all the way through for sure I will listen to it because it is a good song I think it, it's cute it again it makes me feel good just like baby don't cry so you know I would have to say that you know I definitely approve of this song and I do listen to it here and there so guys those are my thoughts on the tracks. so let's put it all together here. So my favorite tracks on this album, I would have to say, go, just going in order of the track list here, not like any specific, you know, saying which one is my top favorite, but I love Hide and Seek, Full Moon, Can't Sleep, Can't Eat, I'm Sick, uh, Hello, Top Secret, Violet Sauce, Baby Don't Cry, and I'll go ahead and throw Pink Key in there. So I mean, guys, out of 11 tracks, I like eight of them. Like that's pretty good. So honestly, I think her play album was quite the success. I really enjoyed it. And I think it was definitely a great step after doing Space of Hip Hop because that was a great album. I really enjoyed Space of Hip Hop and I feel like it's a little underrated. Also, guys, can we just talk about again how underrated style is? Like style is amazing. I love style. Anyways, <laughs> so anyways, I think Play is just a great one. I think this like trilogy right here, style, space of hip hop, play, great ones. Like those are some great years for Namie. And so I will go ahead and show you guys my version that I have as well. So guys, I had gotten the CD DVD version of her Play album and I thought that this was really amazing and I love the photography in this. So let me, of course, show you. The discs aren't anything special. They're literally just silver. And then this one's like gold, which goes with the Funky Town theme, I think. Then you've got her little badge, Nami A, play. And then we've got, of course, our little Obi here. Um, sorry, guys, I know my lighting might be kind of bad, but you know, you gotta have that lighting for your video so that it looks okay and that you're not looking like all splotchy and weird and shadowy. And I am so sorry for my hair. Like, you see this hair? Like, it's so frizzy. It's like frizz town. Like, everybody, let's get up living in the frizzy town. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Like, honestly, like, I blow, uh, I blow dried. I blue dry, blue dry. <sighs> I'm having some problems here, guys. I blow dried my hair <laughs> and now it's like massive frizzy, but it's also like really cold outside and there's snow outside my house right now. And my cats are sitting outside my office door, both staring at me like really hard because they're so hungry, but it's not time. They still have one hour till I get to feed them because if I feed them one hour too early, you know, I'm talking about you. 
then they're going to be mad at me another hour earlier than they normally are. So, you know, they just got to be patient because if I got to wait for my breakfast, they can wait for theirs. Because, yes, guys, it is literally... <laughs> You don't want to know what time it is. It's way too early in the morning. But, you know, I'm on a weird schedule because I work like really strange hours. So just, you know, don't don't worry about it. <laughs> but I will feed my cats. Don't worry, guys. They're in great hands. Anyways, let's get back to what we're supposed to be doing here. So, yeah, we have Namie's play. And she looks gorgeous in this one. I do have to say my favorite, though, I feel like is... Definitely still this one. I know that there is the cover with her and the blue outfit, which she also looks gorgeous, but looks more like a flight attendant in that one to me personally. And then we've got this lovely photo on the inside with her being authoritative, which Nami 8 has a fantastic face for like modeling and everything like that. So like, yeah, you know, can't be upset about that. But I am upset that this was it. Like really? In a DVD album back in 2007 and this is all you're gonna give me like no big photo book or anything so I was a little I was a little disheartened by that a little upset that you know it's okay guys I'll get over it I'll be all right and then yeah we get her finally with her hair down and like a freaking eye patch like pirate town over here but you know she looks makes it look good and look how long her hair is like I don't know if that's extensions or what but like I'm jealous. I will say that. I'm definitely jealous of that hair. Anyways, guys. Also, I mean, I shouldn't say that there's, I mean, there's definitely not a photo book, but then of course they do include all of the lyrics here. And so, I mean, they've got her little play whip and yeah, so there that is. And then it just has, yeah, all the lyrics. So, I mean, they do include the lyrics, which is what you expect, but the quality of it, like... I feel like this could have been better. Like for the for the amount of albums she sold for this one and for Space of Hip Hop, I feel like she should have graced us with like a beautiful photo booklet. Like I would have loved to have more photos from like this photo shoot. Like I bet there were awesome ones that we have never even seen. So I was a little disappointed in the packaging of the actual album itself. But other than that, like the album is pretty good. So if you guys have not listened to Play, which I'm pretty sure most of you have, like, you know I'm talking to you, then, like, yeah, you need to go check it out, because it's one of, like, the most staple ones in Namie's discography. I was about to say choreography, and that would make no sense, but you know what? Just, guys, cut me some slack. It's been a while since I filmed, okay? Like, I'm having a rough time. <laughs> welcome back but anyways it is good to be back guys i hope to get some more videos up here posted soon don't worry kotakumi's monster and angel reviews are coming i'm really i'm excited to talk about them with you guys so let me know what you guys think about namie's play album what are your favorite tracks which music videos do you like also let me look at this mm-hmm mm-hmm mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I pretty much mentioned all the music videos. Okay, guys, so thank you so much for joining me, and I will catch you next time. The minute